Hello, YouTube listeners, students, friends, colleagues. This is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, Faculty Computer Science, El Camino College, Torrance, California. I would like to show you bubble sort for a class or a struct, and that's bubble sort part three. We have done part one and part two before. Please watch part one and part two first to understand this video fully. Please watch bubble sort part one that gives the logic and part two that gives source code for an integer array. <clears throat> Imagine a student class which will be written like this, class student and these are the private data member, first name, last name, ID and GPA and under the public field we have constructors and member function. So, we want to sort an array of student type. Then question we want to ask is how many data member fields are there based on which sorting, can, sorting of an array of student can be done. Go back and see that we have four data members but generally sorting is not done based on first name but it can be done on last name. So, or sorting can be done based on last name, ID and GPA. Okay. <clears throat> Looks like we can do sorting based on ID, GP, and last name. And we have following choices. We can write three sort functions. One that will sort based on, on ID only. Another that will sort based on GPA. And third that will sort based on last name. <clears throat> but rather than writing three functions, which you can do, We'll just write one sort function and I pass a flag to control the sort basis. Okay, we're going to show code for this, actually for the second choice, not the first choice, for this choice. Okay, we show the source code in Xcode. Uh, program we have uses many other functions, but we'll just focus only on bubble sort. Okay. So we get out of the PowerPoint and go to the Xcode. So in Xcode, first of all, we're going to show you the class. <coughs> and our class is here, student, where there is a first name field, last name field, ID and GPA. And in classes, these get hidden, but the public part of it, which is in the public colon, are the constructors, member functions, and so on. Get and set function, print functions, that can be used with the instance of the class, okay? So really, that's all, that it's enough to show that much uh, for the purpose of doing the bubble sort. Okay, so our bubble sort will be like this that it takes the array of student type, it takes the, well, let's just call it len, it takes the logical length of the array and a flag. And in the flag, we set a value that if flag equal to one, then we're gonna sort based on ID. If flag is two, we're gonna sort based on last name, Kansas this is case sensitive version, but we can do case insensitive also. And if flag is three, we're gonna sort based on GPA. So that's why, that's the purpose of passing the flag actually. Okay. We jump to the definition of bubble sort that we have already written. And you will recall from video number two that it's gonna need two loops to do the sorting. Inner loop, is the bubbling loop. Outer loop is the sort control loop. Okay, which will cause the bubbling for each case. Okay, we'll keep doing it until all the ones are bubbled in the right location. And 
in video 2 we explain why we have this condition loop condition and of course this simply means that we should run this inner loop as many times as the number of elements in the array okay that's that so we're going to show you first the flag value could be one two three one will sort based on id so let's just look at the code there if flag equals equals one sort based on id that means we're going to be comparing id in the array location j with j plus one if I expose the code, that's exactly what I do. <coughs> At array location j, I get the id, and if that id is larger than id at the j plus 1, then I should do the swapping. Okay. Now, in this case, you have to be careful. You are going to swap the whole structure or whole variable, not just the id. I made that mistake myself in the past, so don't make that mistake. So swapping code is identical to the integer array. We create a temporary student, or you can call it buffer if you like. And then set that temp equal to j. Then <clears throat> we can swap into j the value j plus 1. And since j was saved here, into j plus 1, we swap temp so that's our swapping code so this is gonna sort based on id code will be identical for swapping based on flag value 2 where we are doing sort based on last name So if last name at j location is larger than the last name in j plus 1, then do the swap. And you will see swap code is identical. This code and this code is identical. So that's not going to change. Only this if condition is going to change. If flag is 3, that means sort based on GPA. And in that case, if G, GPA at the location J is higher than the next GPA, J plus 1, then swap them. Swapping code is identical. Okay. Finally, they may pass a wrong flag, so you will have an else block where invalid sort basis, and we exit the code. That's the bubble sort. Now we're going to show its application. <coughs> And there are a lot of moving parts to show the application. We're not going to go through everything. We go to the main function. So basically, we declare an array of student type. Max is 30. We need to open an input file and validate to fill the array. You could, you could have filled it uh, by hand, but we're not going to do that. We are only we're going to use an input file. And once the input file is open, there is a function called fill student array that's going to actually fill this array and return a logical length. And then we're going to print using a print function the student array unsorted form. Then if I pass the flag of one, it's going to sort based on ID. And then we print based on that. And if I pass the flag of 2 to the bubble sort function, then it's going to sort based on last name. And we print it after sort on the last name. And finally, if I pass a flag value of 3 to the bubble sort, it's going to sort based on GPA. And then we print that. And I just want to show you the result after each case. So let me do one thing that I'll put here cn.get 
So program will stop after each one and I can review that for you and go to the next case. <coughs> Okay, and I would need the file name. So file name I've already copied here. So I can use that. So let's run our program. And I'm gonna maximize this so you can see it very clearly. And you can see this is the unsorted array where there's no real order in any of the, either the last name, ID or GPA. Uh, you can see we're gonna sort based on ID. So it's one, two, three, nine, nine, nine. So there's no real order. And if I hit the enter key, then it'll get sorted based on ID. And sorting based, on ID, then you can see ID one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, 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 all sevens, all nines. So it got sorted based on ID. I guess I should have shown you the data file before going that far. And it's right here. So you can see data file is the same data that you're seeing in Xcode. Okay. And if I, okay. So in sort on ID, this block got executed right here. Flag one and this block right there. If ID, First ID is larger than the next one, then swap the struct or class items. Okay, if I click enter key here, it'll get sorted based on last name. And that's exactly what we have here. Adams, Doe, Jones, Wim, Zach. In this case, the code executed is this. this one okay and if I enter one more time then it will get sorted based on GPA and 2.5 of GPA 3 3.2 3.7 3.9 and in that in this case the code that got executed is this Okay, so in bubble sort, passing a flag in case of items, classes which have multiple fields and you want to sort based on multiple fields in different attempts. By passing a flag, you could do that and you don't have to write the three or four sort functions. Okay. That's the bubble sort for classes. And you can do the same thing for struct. Thanks for watching. Dr. Singhal saying goodbye to you.